Hello and thank you for joining me. I'm Heather Forgan of stampwithnelly.com. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator in the UK. Today I want to show you a fun technique using stamp and write markers. I have to admit that um, since falling in love with stamping blends, my stamp and write markers sometimes don't get the love that they should do. So I thought I would show you how you can use them for a technique like this. And I'm also using my Stamparatus. Now I'll try and not blind you all the time with my light, but um, I kind of do need the light um, so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, so I'm using the Tasteful Touches stamp set um, with this feather. I've also used this stamp here and the You're So Special. I've added a piece of ribbon and I'll show you what I did with that. Um, in a moment or two as well. So let's just crack on. I'm using the very vanilla note cards and envelopes to make life even easier. Because this might not look like a simple stamping card, but really when you've got the, the right tools, you've got the Stampin' Right markers and you've got the Stampin' Artist, it really is nice and easy. And I will show you how. First of all, I'm going to introduce you to the Stamparatus. If you haven't already seen one, then um, let me just move those so you can move that further up. It comes with two magnets. There's um, storage on the back for your other magnet there, and the one that I'm using goes in there. The grid mat um, I purchased separately, but that's just a piece of paper you could just as easily cut up a piece of um, other grid mat or just put in some copier paper if you don't want to get any mess on your base plate. So your base is magnetic and these are really strong magnets. I tend to only just use one at a time because if the two of them uh, connect then they quite often um, break. It comes with this foam mat as well, which you need to use if you're using photopolymer stamps, but you don't need to use if you're using a red rubber stamps because it's already got that foam layer there. So it's already got the cushioning and for a red rubber stamp, you want to stamp onto a firm base. With photopolymer, you do want to have that in there so it gives you that bit of cushioning that's missing from your photopolymer stamps. Your photopolymer stamps are the ones that you can see right through so they don't have that cushioning. I'm going to put that back in there. Um, I don't really need it. Now quite often with um, repetitive stamping I would do it this way around and I'd move my hinges down like that so my repetitive stamping would be that way. It's just really a case of changing your perspective um, so instead of stamping across that way you're turning your, your paper. I'm actually going to do it at this side just because I find it a little bit easier. I don't really understand why but I do. The other tip I would have for you is to place the stamp set that you're using or a spare stamp set um, there so that when you put that platform down it's nice and level it's nice and flat and it's not going to move around okay so my note card base I'm just going to pop it into the corner there but then I'm going to take it down a tiny little bit and the reason for that is that there is a tiny little edge around this stamp um, that won't stamp. And I know from doing my previous card that I want, I need it to stamp really quite closely to the edge there. So that I can fit five of them in there. Now, the key thing with choosing which stamps to use for this hinge technique is that it fits within that hinge space there. Okay, so that fits in there. Then we've moved down to there, 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 there. 
so on okay or you would want it to fit into two so that doesn't quite but let me see that one that one does so you could move it down two notches and stamp again and it would fit in okay so that for this one i'm gonna place it slightly over the edge there that's where i want it i'm gonna bring this over press it down and it picks it up okay and then i can just double check that if i go right down to that one there that when i put it down it is just slightly over the edge as well but i know that that is the excess rubber that's over the edge and not the actual stamp okay something stuck to my stamp there it's not going to help all right so that's how that works and i just thought it was fun to um, use my stamp and write markers to add different colors and what I figured was that it's better not to have a straight line on it. I'm using the Stampin' Right markers come in a huge big box that has all of the colours um, from Stampin' Up's range in it, which is the Mini Marvelous Markers box, which I will admit is pretty expensive, but it's cheaper than buying all of the individual inks. And now you know you can use them for your stamps. But you can also buy them in um, colour families. So the colours that I'm using are from the Brights pack. So you can buy a Brights, a Subtles, a Regals and a Neutrals pack. And build up your collection that way. Okay. And... And... I say you've got a brush nib which is great for adding lots of colour all at once and you've got a kind of bullet nib ballpoint nib type thing that is great for for detail work so moving that over and there we have it now the other thing with this is if I thought that blue's a bit pale and um, I think I maybe need a wee bit more on that side I can just do that and just press that down on there again and I've added a little bit more colour there bring it down one step and then just repeat the process. You could clean your um, stamp with your chamois in between times. Um, but I don't really think it's necessary. Just make sure you get all of the bits covered. I was going to say where have I, where have I put the orange one, uh, which is Mango Melody. And your lines are going to be different on every one, so your feathers won't be absolutely identical. What they will be is perfectly spaced and neatly lined up. So I'm going to fast forward so that you don't have to watch me colour all of these in individually. And I will be back to talk to you in a moment or two. Okay, so there we have our P 
piece with the five feathers on it and I can just clean that up just using my simple chamois or my stamp and scrub just the same way as you would do when you were inking up any other um, red rubber stamp now I wanted to include a bit of purple in there but I didn't want it to be too um, vibrant I want it to kind of be at the background to be honest in hindsight, I probably don't need it, but I just wanted to add it to show you another little bit of a technique um, with the stamp and write markers. So I'm pressing it down where I want it in that corner there. Put my stamp pad at the top there now. And I'm using the Gorgeous Grape marker from the same set. Now obviously if you've got the full set you might just go for a lighter purple like Highland Heather um, but if you've just got the brights then you can ink it up with your marker and then bring in a piece of scrap paper. Press that down and, there you go. and then you can press it down properly on your card and it's just taken the um, full strength ink off and you've got um, as if you'd stamped off. So. For this one, all I'm going to do is fold my card in half and pop it back up in that corner there and do exactly the same again. Just, and you'll see I'm using the side of the brush rather than the top. The top would give you a very, very precise but the side of it gives good coverage. I'm just turning it around so that I'm not using just the same bit all of the time. Okay, scrap paper in, press it down, and then press it down for real to get your second generation or your stamped off piece there. Okay, so that is all we're going to use the stamp of artist for at the moment. So I can put that away. Now I'm going to show you the sentiment, you are so special. And it's just pretty much the same thing. Just colouring one word at a time. You can do this on your Stamparatus as well. And the benefit of that is if you've missed a bit um, or you or you don't, or you've gone over a bit um, or you don't press it correctly or you rock your stamp, then um, the Stamparatus will help you. You can't really rock your stamp with a stamp apparatus and you if you haven't stamped it properly or haven't inked it properly you can just do it again um, because nothing will have moved you've got your magnets keeping it in place and you can just go over exactly the same bit again so but just in case you don't have a stamp of and you want to try this technique, then it works just as well. I'm going to turn it that way, I think. Save card. Press it down. And there you go. You are so special. So you can see, if you look really closely, I have got a tiny bit of purple on the bottom of that S there. I'm not bothered about that. This is the 
again, most label punch. In fact, I looked, I was going to call it something else. So just line it up to punch it out. And punches are great for beginner stampers as well. So it means that you don't have to have um, a cut and emboss machine um, right away. You can you can do lots with punches. And stamping up punches are so sturdy. They will last you forever. So all I'm doing on here is just adding a little bit of ink from again using the edge of the, the Stampin' Light marker and it's great for things like this where you've got a little um, indent there you can get right into the corners with that and it just lifts it a little bit and may, will help it stand out a little bit more. Now I'm bringing that scrap back in again and I am using this very vanilla ribbon which is on the retirement list so hopefully hasn't gone and if you've watched my videos before you've probably seen me use the thing Stampin' Blends to colour it. You can use your Stampin' Write uh, Stampin markers as well and just again nice and smoothly what I would say is that the stamp and blends tend to give you a more even colouring and dries so much more quickly because they're alcohol markers and the alcohol just evaporates but you can get a really good result using your um, stamp and write markers so grab yourself some white ribbon and some markers or in my case very vanilla ribbon and some markers and uh, you've got ribbon for every colour you could possibly want now I would normally leave that to dry a little bit longer But you don't want to wait, and neither do I, to be honest. So, what I'm going to do is bring my card back in. I'm going to add that along there. And I think I'll just use the stamp and seal for that. Just to put a little bit along there. And that will hold that in place. then get my Stampin' Dimensionals and I'm just going to pop three of them along the back there, take the backings off and then oops, I think I've smudged that probably should take a little bit more time over it but when I'm doing a video I like it to be as quick as it possibly can so there we have it using your stamparatus to get that perfect alignment there's no way on earth I would ever be able to stamp that as perfectly spaced out um, and straight as that without my stamparatus and using your stamp and write markers to add lots of little bits of colour to your stamps. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and if you have got stamp and write markers that you'll dig them back out again and have some fun with them. If you're new to my channel please do click on the um, subscribe button I'd love for you to do that and if you want to buy any of the products that I have used in today's card, then click on the description bar below to either visit my blog or to see the product links in the description bar below as well. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next time, take care. Bye bye.